All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are back from our closed session. We're going to go into presentations. It is our 5.30 p.m. presentation period, and we have a presentation of Vehicle Theft 10851 Awards and Chief of Police, Del Mondary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, for those who may not be aware, uh, CHP and uh, actually uh, AAA partner for um, this um, 10851 award presentation. <clears throat> 10851 is the vehicle code for um, driving a stolen vehicle. Um, and in order to be eligible for this award, there are certain criteria. They have to have what we refer to as rolling stolens. So they have to recover six vehicles that they actually see being driven that are stolen and get someone in custody. Um, they can have a total of 12 recoveries. Uh, three of them have to be rolling or, or moving at, at, at the time. Or if they develop information that leads to an auto theft ring where at least 10 vehicles are recovered and two suspects are arrested. Um, and then we then if we have people that meet that criteria, uh, we, we submit their information to the CHP and the AAA. They review it, verify it, um, and, and then offer these awards. So we have a, a number of officers that are being recognized um, this evening. Um, Officer Jason Jimenez. Where'd you go, Jason? Oh, there he is. Um, he's actually receiving his first award um, this evening. He recovered three of the rolling stolens, um, nine other vehicles. He's made three arrests, and the total value of the vehicles he's recovered was $95,600. And, and all the officers will receive a certificate from CHP and AAA and then an award pin that they'll be allowed to wear on their uniform as well. Um, our next recipient is Detective Christopher Tooth. <clears throat> and he, he recovered six rolling stolens, total value $60,500. Well, he's not the best. I, your daddy's the best. We'll, we'll tell. We'll talk about him in a minute. Um, Sergeant Dow Chang. This is his second award as well. He's recovered three rollers, um, nine that um, were were abandoned, for lack of a better term. Three arrests. Total value forty three thousand six hundred and eighty nine dollars. So Sergeant Chang has to do that while he is supervising people, which um, makes that w um, even better. Um, and over the course of time, depending on how rapidly or how many arrests and vehicles these guys are recovering, um, they could actually receive multiple awards. Um, the, our next recipient is not with us this evening. Um, but Sergeant Christopher Saucier is receiving his second and third awards. Um, he had a total of, of over the course of time, six rollers, 18 that had been abandoned, six arrests, $89,730 worth of vehicles that were recovered. So we will make sure he gets these. And then our final recipient is Corporal Gregory Elias. So Greg is actually receiving his first, second, third, and fourth 
um, awards. Uh, he had 24 um, moving, rolling stolen vehicles um, and he, with the same number of arrests and the total number of, of value of the vehicles that he recovered, $206,660. Come on up here, Tyler. Congratulations. Now, Greg won't get to wear all four of his ribbons. They actually put a little number sign underneath of, of each one that they receive, so he'll get to wear his highest one. And thank you, Mr. Mayor. Chief, I have a question for you. Is, is Officer Saucier, is that his name that's not here? It is. So he's off trying to get more cars and more awards, right? Uh, he, he's actually <laughs> off having surgery on his knees so that he can come back and get, and get more of those. <laughs> Congratulations, all of you. Thank you for what you do for our community. Stay safe. All right, with that, we're going to go to recess. All right, good evening, everybody. This is the City of Desert Hot Springs regular meeting of the City Council, and the City Council serving as a successor agency to the Redevelopment Agency Board. This is April 2nd, 2019, and this is our 6 p.m. regular session. Roll call, please. Council Member Betts? Present. Council Member Gardner? Present. Council Member Zavala? Present. Mayor Pro Tempi? Present. Mayor Menace? Present. Do I have anybody from the Ministerial Fellowship tonight that want to give the invocation? Do I have any council members that would like to give? Do I have somebody? Brad? Yes. Yeah, I would love to. Awesome. Thank you. Did you state your name for the record? My name is Andrea Michelle, and I'm a uh, resident of Desert Hot Springs. Thank you. It'd be my honor to lead prayer tonight. Dog. Bow your heads, please. Our kind, gracious, loving, heavenly Father, who has given us a son, Yeshua, Lord, that we may enter into your kingdom because of the work that he has done for all mankind. 
Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit to come and help preside, for we are just weak human beings in need of righteousness to help guide in this great city, Desert Hot Springs. We ask you to fall upon this meeting and cause it to be a holy convocation, for covenants are made with our leaders and kings, and they are ratified for our well-being, and we are commanded to pray for them. So, Father, I ask that you bless each and every leader here today and guide us all, Lord, as fine citizens of the kingdom of earth and in heaven, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Betts, would you lead us tonight? to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna now going to have our city attorney report on closed session. Thank you. We have no reportable action this evening. We'll now take the approval of the agenda at this time. Would anybody like to pull anything from the consent calendar? Minutes so that I think that's the only thing on the consent calendar, right? I'd like to pull the minutes for a quick change, possible okay. change. So we'll we'll do that item first when we get to. And so there's only one item on the consent calendar. So tonight we're just going to approve the agenda as whole with the item being pulled off for discussion. Uh, is there any other comments? I'll accept the motion. So moved. Whoops, sorry. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. At this time, we're going to go to public comment. If anybody would like to speak on any items that are not on the agenda, there's blue cards back there on the table. Please fill one out, hand it to one of our city clerks, and they'll hand it to me. At this time, pursuant to the Brown Act, any person may comment on matters of general interest within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city council not listed on the agenda. Under the Brown Act, the city council shall not take action on or discuss matters raised during public comment portion of the agenda that are not listed on the agenda. All comments are to be directed to the city council and shall be devoid of any personal attacks. Members of the public are expected to maintain professional courteous decorum during public comments. Our first speaker tonight is going to be Chris Cunningham from Desert Valley Disposal. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, council members, staff. Thank you so much for the time. I uh, just wanted to go over a couple of updates on a couple other mentions. Um, so there's a lot going on in April. Um, as there always is. Um, the first is our, our citywide curbside cleanup. Um, that's going to be the week of the 22nd through the 26th, all week long. Uh, we'll make one pass through the city. Um, so put out your items, a couple of bulky items, two bulky items, what we limited to so that um, we can get through the entire city. Uh, sometimes our guys have a habit of kind of crossing over each other a street will get missed. So if, if that happens, you know, we, we encourage everyone to please call, let us know so we can get out there because it does happen. Um, after that, that Saturday, the 27th, there's going to be an e-waste event. Um, that's our semi-annual uh, shredding and e-waste event. Uh, that's going to be held right here at the Carl May Community Center in the back parking lot. Um, from 8 a.m. to noon. Uh, so please, if you have any documents uh, that you want to have destroyed, uh, please take them out there. We'll take care of it. Um, and also an e-waste, any electronic devices you may have, uh, you can drop those off as well. We'll have some staff on hand. A um, Couple of mentions, um, a brief mention on the illegal dumping program. Um, that is always doing well. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we always pick up. Um, the reason I mention it, is that uh, recently I know that there was some code amendment change. So we've been working with code um, and that really is helping some of the abuses of the program. I know we've had certain properties that are continuing uh, to take advantage of that program, which it really wasn't designed for. So working with code ha has been um, has been fantastic. It, it really has helped some of the issue. And I have to say that um, code and uh, Christina Archuleta, she has been really just phenomenal to work with. Um, so I, I work with her, my staff works with her, uh, the guys in the in the truck out there work with her. She is really, she cares, she's very committed to it and, and, and is on top of the situation. I just wanted to mention her because she's fantastic. Um, and then real quick, 
Um, just mentioning uh, AB 341 and 1826, those are, those are the mandatory uh, commercial recycling and organics laws um, that have been in place for a few years. But the new threshold um, in 2019, it really affects everybody. Um, with CalRecycle having more authority than they've had starting January, they can review any time. I can tell you that I've talked to them at least 30 times in the past 60 days. Um, so they are out, they are forcing a lot of these issues. They want people signed up on recycling, even though we're kind of in a recycling crisis right now. Um, so I just wanted to alert you to that. Uh, we are working on that good faith effort, and thank you, Danny, for always helping me with that too. So um, I'll keep you updated on that. A lot more to come on that. Yeah, thank you, Chris. And we're going to schedule some time with the city clerk's office for a presentation on that. It sounds like it's something that we're going to have to be more up and aware of in uh, our businesses and, and homeowners. So absolutely, uh, we'll schedule a, a presentation here in the near future. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Rosie Terry, she is the last speaker card I have. If you want to speak on items not on the agenda tonight, a blue card needs to be filled out and handed to the city clerk. Good evening. It's good to be here. Good to see the new council member. Welcome. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Senior Center Advisory Board. I'm a member of it. And we are uh, having a problem. We're struggling and we're also uh, trying to help with the problem of disruptive behavior from the school children, the high school kids uh, that come through uh, the area here, that come through the parking lot. And uh, we've had a few incidents already where um, I believe the police have been called a few times. Our director is a little concerned that it's a safety issue for some of our seniors. Um, and so we want, we have some suggestions, we have some ideas. First of all, we do want to reach out to those children. Uh, our director has already uh, set up a program. April is National Board Game Month, and so in April this month we'll be, some of us will be heading over to Bubbling Wells to have board game uh, sessions with the kids. We want to try to establish a rapport. A rapport. And I know uh, the problem's been uh, in front of you before, this same problem with the children at the library disrupting uh, at the outside of the library. Uh, so also, other ideas that we have, and we need the city to help us with this, um, we would like a wall uh, behind the senior center and where the kids can't jump the fence to come through. Um, we also think uh, we need an extra security person, especially between the times of 2 and 4.30 p.m. Um, cameras, we're thinking maybe five cameras, one at each entrance. And, um, and so that's our petition to you. Um, we do know that the Boys and Girls Club has changed, that the situation there has changed, and I understand that the participation of kids there has dropped off dramatically. They're not they're not going to the Boys and Girls Club like they used to. I think two-thirds um, has dropped off membership, I've been told, by one of our community members. So um, that being said, um, you know, we'd like, we'd like to work with the city on this issue. Um, we, we just want to reach out and have some ideas and come to us. I know, I know some of our members. Jan uh, supports us very much at the Senior Center, so please help us with that issue. We don't want those children to get in trouble. We don't want yep. them to wind up in the system. Thank you for your comments you. tonight. My last speaker is Donna Wardeen. Thank you, Council. Thank you, for attendees. Um, I am a Donna Wardeen. I'm a resident and a homeowner here in Desert Hot Springs for many years. I love this town. 
I am also a member of the Desert Hot Springs Women's Club, and many of you are familiar with us. We give, uh, we raise the money in Desert Hot Springs. We're a charitable organization, and we give all the money away again in Desert Hot Springs. Today, we know we were uh, had five scholarships announced. They're all going to UCs, uh, various places: San Diego, LA. Um, big call it big uh, universities so we're very proud of that and uh, to help us towards our goal i would just like to announce <sighs> desert hot springs women's club barbecue april 7th that is this sunday at 64647 dillon road that's the old dillon roadhouse for the, uh, those of you that remember it that way um, food will be the event is 12 to 4 Food will be served 12 to 2. Music by Orlando will be from 1 to 3. And raffles and live auctions will be 3 to 4. Adults $20, children 10, and kids under 6 are free. You get a Dillon Burger, you have a choice. Dillon Burger with fries or a pulled pork sandwich with beans and coleslaw. And one free beer or soda comes with each ticket. Thank you. Please come and please help us raise more money. When we're done giving away scholarships, we give it all to the youth here, and we give to each of the nine schools. So the more we raise, the more we can give away. Thank you. Jan wouldn't let us get up unless we bought our tickets, so I got my two. If you run out, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you, Donna. Anyone else in the public would like to speak on items not on the agenda tonight? This is the final call. We'll close public comments at this time and we'll go to the um, city manager's report. Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just had a, one thing in response to the uh, young lady from the Senior Center. Um, the Boys and Girls Club uh, attendance is maxed out. We can't actually accept any more kids. They're at full capacity. Um, the program is running as smoothly as we've ever seen it, actually, actually better than it had been previously. And there are several programs and opportunities there for our youth. Um, we had to add additional transportation because of the amount of youth that go there each and every day so to drop them off So I just didn't I wanted to spell that especially with the, the folks here tonight and anybody who might be watching on TV Anything else from your departments? All right Yes, go ahead Jen Chief you have some dad Oh, that's right. She's oh, mad mad No you want you to know to know about that yeah so uh two weeks ago um and for those um that weren't here earlier we did a presentation for stolen vehicle recoveries um two weeks ago they also had the mad awards um where they recognize officers for their efforts in um drunk driving enforcement and uh uh Corporal Corey Carranza received an, an award from um, from Mad Mothers Against Drunk Drivers um, for his efforts here in in the city, as well as Adam Perez. Adam um, wasn't able to make the ceremony, but 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 Corey was, and and so um, you know we're happy that these guys are getting recognized for the things that they're doing in, in the city, and you know I cannot emphasize this enough. Um, and I was speaking with somebody earlier today. In today's world, there's absolutely zero reason for you to drive while you're under the influence of alcohol or drugs. N none at all whatsoever through designated drivers. And I know people who go to the bars or go to establishments where alcohol is served that don't drink. They go with their friends or, or drugs that are being used just no no sense um, in in driving and in, intoxicated we have uber we have Lyft um, there's just so many different resources that are that are available to you so please um, I would like to see our officers never recognized for a drunk driving arrest again stop driving while you're intoxicated thank you All right sorry about that Councilmember Pye, I told them about about it. We both were looking like a couple of deer in the headlights there, so I apologize. She said mad. I thought she was mad. <laughs> you don't want to make Jen mad, whatever you do. All right, we'll go to Councilmember Commons. Who would like to go first tonight? Mr. Betts? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, I want to um, talk about the Boys and Girls Club quickly since I came up. Uh, right when the transition was being made from 
the Boys and Girls Club of the Coachella Valley to the city taking it over. Um, I was maybe a couple, three weeks after they got up and running and I went down there and I looked and when I walked in, I didn't see the play area where all the pool tables and everything were. And I, the first impression I got was, wow, maybe this isn't working. There isn't anybody here. It used to be just everybody playing. It was like a great big playhouse. And so I asked her, so well, where's everybody's attendance now? She says, oh no, we're full. They're all off getting help with their homework. They're off in these educational programs. They're filling up all the other ancillary rooms that are an important part of that program. And she said, they'll get to come out here after they do their homework. And so just like you know, you had heard from somebody, I had heard that a couple of weeks ago, I heard the same story, that it's not as busy, that attendance has fallen way off. And uh, that's not true. That program is a great success now. And, uh, but yes, there are, I guess there were some kids that were going down there. And when they first took over, these kids just walked in like they owned the place. Well, now I guess they're walking over here to this parking lot like they own this place. And so, um, but uh, they have to sign up for that program. They can't just run in there and think they rule the roost. Um, as far as what's going on here, I've had a couple of suggestions about how to fix it. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe we'll get, we need to get a handle on this one. We've had some problems here. It's been going on way too long. Um, I don't know what the solution is, but uh, we've got some professionals here. Just so I'm, I'm sure the, you know, with that request that came in, there'll be some sort of attention to that. Um, I want to take a moment to just highlight, you know, as council members, we get these calls from people. Um, you know, residents have a problem, and sometimes you get a call that says, hey, there's this house next to me that is, well, it's really dragging down the neighborhood. It's a problem. And uh, there was one that was down on Sycamore, except it wasn't a house. It was a vacant lot. But it was a vacant lot that had been turned into the most ridiculous encampment you'd ever seen. Not an encampment, but, you know, pallets for fences covered with tarps, with a motor home, no sewage hookup. Uh, and it's right next to this, you know, beautiful homes. So I got this call, from, and so I, I talked to the city manager and the code enforcement and asked him, you know, please, could you do something about this? And I know nobody likes to see the code officer come, you know, when they come knock on your door, hi, like you got a problem, I need you to fix this. That's, it's a very difficult job that our code staff does, but is it Christina Archuleta, did I pronounce that correctly? Doing a fantastic job. And I got a call from the people in Sycamore, and this, the process is an instant. It took about six months or more to, to get this through. You've got to give people their property rights and everything else. But I got an email and says, wow, thank you very much. Um, They're just ecstatic that this place went from so horrible to now back to just a nice proper thing next to them. So on behalf of the residents down there, they wanted me to be sure and thank our crew and our on this you know city team uh, just fantastic success job down there so great job thanks um, continuing in the meetings up there at skag on the re regional housing needs assessment and i won't bore you with all that's going on there but we're getting some very very good attention uh, for our city's condition on the affordable housing front and they've put in a couple of things in past arena cycles i think that helped our situation and now we're getting worked into that process even more. And one of them is to balance, this is getting worked into the state housing um, uh, disposition, it was be balanced disproportionate household income distributions. In other words, more high income RENA to lower income areas. And what that means is that they want to try and get rid of this concentration of low-income communities where one in community is a high concentration of low-income people and other communities have this uh, huge overabundance of well, wealth. And um, it sounds like a little bit of social engineering, but how it translates to us is that they were dumping all the affordable housing in a community that was already poor. And the whole spirit and intent of this is to provide housing where people actually work and live and don't have to drive so far to get there. So, and yeah, we're, we're making some real progress on that. And I'm not sure as clear as I should have been on that one, but it was a two-hour meeting and gets to be pretty heady. But anyhow, so take my word for it. We're making some progress there. And then the last thing is, is we have the marijuana industry here in town. And um, there's an article out it's in a publication, of course, it would be called Leafy since it's marijuana <laughs> industry. but. They come up with some creative names for their magazines. But they're talking about the jobs 
that are going on in the industry here. And they're talking about the Federal Bureau of Labor Statistics doesn't even recognize the jobs that are being created in the cannabis industry because they, uh, well, it's illegal federally, um, but it's a huge numbers. And um, the industry has created 211,000 new jobs across the country. And if you compare that to, what is it here, you got coal jobs, there's 52,000 new coal mining jobs compared to 211,000 uh, jobs in the, in the cannabis industry. And it's, it's been a huge increase. And they compare it to all the other uh, job categories out there, and it's the biggest single job growth industry. And I'm just pointing out that, you know, we talk about, you see that MSNBC report where we're going to get $50 million in tax revenue. And, um, you know, it's important. We need to pay the bills around here. But when you see the people now in the restaurants and in buying gasoline and shopping and the jobs that it's bringing, that's really the main benefit that we're getting out of this is this increased economic activity. You drive past those places and they are full, all those cars. And they just ran into somebody the other day that said, geez, I had this job at a restaurant, it was okay, but I was getting home late, I couldn't take care of my kids because you know, I haven't trade off with my husband and the care and everything because I always had to work late. Now she's got a regular nine to five job or plus seven to three on a shift there and just really happy and getting good income and insurance. So. There's a real good benefit to this community um, from all that activity that's going on down there, and it's not just tax revenue. So that's it. That's my speech. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Gardner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, quite a few meetings in the last couple of weeks. Uh, attended the board meeting of the Greater Palm Springs Convention and Visitors Bureau as a board member. Uh, my first meeting with that one. Um, got a chance to brief them on some of our efforts to promote the spas, uh, develop cannabis tourism, uh, our efforts to obtain San Snow National Monument Visitors Center and Park Headquarters. And we got a lot of support for all three of those things and we'll be discussing and working with the other member cities as well as the Convention Bureau and Visitors Bureau on those efforts down the road. Uh, attended the Coachella Valley Economic Partnership Board meeting in Cathedral City and we're hoping to host a CVEP board meeting here in DHS later this fall, but uh, of interest to our cannabis folks, uh, CVEP is holding a forum on sustainability in the cannabis industry on May 8th out at UCR in Palm Desert. It's absolutely free, and you can register at CVEP.com, that's C-V-E-P.com. Um, attended the Riverside County Supervisor's Annual Senior Inspiration Awards, where our own planning commissioner <coughs> chair and uh, personal mentor of mine, Larry Buchanan, was given the award for DHS's Inspiring Senior of the Year and a, a well-deserved honor for a, for a good friend and a good supporter of the city. Um, got a chance to attend the Palm Springs Unified School District's ROTC Pass and Review Parade at DHS High. And I get to see these young kids walking to and from school past my house uh, almost on a daily basis in their uniforms. And, being able to see them in parade and to win the award from the district for their efforts was absolutely fantastic. It was very moving, I have to I have to confess. And we have the best ROTC program in the Valley here. And it gives me great uh, great confidence in our future to see these, uh, these young folks out uh, in the ROTC program. I uh, had the honor of being principal of a day at uh, Desert Springs Middle School, whose real principal is Dr. Kiera Snyder. Uh, and that's an amazing school. Great work in a challenging, very challenging environment. I was impressed with the passion and love for the school for both the students and the teachers and the pride in their school. Uh, it was a fantastic experience. Uh, I'd not set foot in a junior high, which is what we called them back in the day, mm. um, and since I was a student. And education's changed a lot. Um, we never got to make s'mores to demonstrate how tectonic plates work for earthquakes. Um, that was really fun and satisfying too. Uh, <laughs> I want to thank uh, PSUSD for the opportunity. It was an amazing school right here in the heart of DHS. Uh, was it the DHS Rotary Big Heart Awards, honoring some amazing people that make this a great city, including our city staff, Richard Lynn in the planning department and Sergeant Saucier in the PD. Congrats to them and our other winners, all of whom will make DHS such a great place to live. And lastly, last night attended a reception for elected officials at the for the uh, Carrion Foundation, the Dr. Carrion Foundation, which is a wonderful organization that I really didn't know a lot about here in the Valley. They raise funds, uh, give college, college scholarships to Mexican-American youth here in the Valley, including once upon a time our own Danny Porras, 
uh, who is now serving on the board. So congratulations, that's a great honor. And it's an amazing organization. Uh, 1.4 million in scholarships to date. And the great thing they have is that contributes, uh, contributions to the foundation are matched dollar for dollar twice. So somebody gives a $100 contribution, it becomes a $400 one. And if you're interested in learning more, check out carrionfoundation.org, C-A-R-R-E-O-N, foundation.org. That's all I have, sir. Thank you, Ms. Pye. Um, I'm going to ask the audience to multitask. I want to show some stuff um, that our code enforcement did, and then at that same time, I'm going to talk about other stuff that staff has done. Now, when I read it to you, it's how it came to us, um, the city council. So, go ahead. We wanted to provide an update on the mural of the Desert Hot Springs Animal Hospital located at 13700 Palm Drive. The mural is in the process of being repaired. The Humane Society plans to repair the mural with the help of the original artist. The mural has been scrubbed and various efforts have been made to mitigate the damage. The artist is traveling from out of town and will hopefully be here this weekend to assess the damage. A timeline for repairs will be provided to the city as soon as possible and will continue to update you. The Furby Pool. We are thrilled to announce that the Furby Pool will be opening for the summer season on Saturday, May 25th. We will also be offering drive-in movies every other Saturday free of charge for families to enjoy. We are creating a flyer with the movie schedule and we'll be posting it on our website and Facebook to get the word out to the community. The first movie is Saturday, May 25th, 5 p.m. Ralph, Ralph Breaks the Internet. Palm Drive Entryway. We are excited to start the Palm Drive Entryway project in the next two weeks. There has been a slight setback with this project due to a delay with the encroachment permit from the city of Cathedral City. An artist's rendition of the entryway is available at City Hall. Please see Roberta if you would like to take a look at it. Human Resources is conducting an orientation for a new crossing guard. Planning Department, Best Western Project, drafting the development agreement and negotiating with the city manager. Tuscan Hills Project, specific plan was submitted pending engineering and conditions of approval. Code enforcement, 16 administrative citations, 39 cases closed, 263 cases open in 219, 40 inspections completed, 26 new cases open, 36 notice of violations issue, 45 service requests, 193 total open cases, and code enforcement issue 16 administrative citation totaling $3,400. Code officer Chapman, Chaplain opened 15 abandoned vehicle abandoned vehicle abatement cases, and he closed all 15. This reporting period, the police department handled, this reporting period is through the 28th. This reporting period, the police department handled 524 calls for service, took 63 reports, made 10 arrests, and issued six traffic citation and three jaywalking citation. Animal control, this reporting period, animal control to handle 40 calls for service, took one report, issued 10 licenses, had six animals, and returned to their owners 15. That ends my report. Thank you very much. Ms. Zavala. Um, I, I'm going to be very brief. Um, I just have an announcement. So Pump Springs Unified School District will have their um, 
career technical education student showcase on May 16th from 4 to 7 p.m. at the Palm Springs Air Museum. And basically all of the um, high schools within the district that have um, academies, career academies, will have their students show up and, and present some of the projects that they've worked on. Um, and then also just a reminder for people that are looking for jobs, don't forget that the census is looking for people and they pay well, so you still have time to apply for their jobs and that's it. Awesome. And I'll try to be brief. I, got, I had attended quite a bit in the last few weeks. Um, I also attended the uh, ROTC, the Marine Corps Junior ROTC pass and review uh, for the high school here. They have a fantastic program. I believe they have close to 300 kids involved, but the, the marching part of it's less than that. And they do this each year and the superintendent awards, it make, uh, gives the award out and our junior ROTC won uh, again this year. So they just do a fantastic job. Uh, Michael Burke, who's a local business owner, had a, uh, a, another ribbon cutting and a community block party. And I think a lot of us attended that. Uh, I was honored to give the Senior Inspiration Award as mayor. There's not very many things I get to do without the whole council saying you, you can do this, but I do get to uh, issue the Senior Inspiration each year, and this year we I did issue it to uh, Larry Buchanan, who is the Planning Commissioner, Chairman of our Planning Commission. He also was on our Community Cultural Affairs Commission, uh, Historical Society, Rotarian, and just all around good humanitarian. So again, Larry, thank you for your service. I also attended a, uh, a phone conference for Riverside County Transportation Commission, future funding initiatives. Um, the com most people don't realize, but the funding for road transportation comes down from the state through the Riverside County Transportation Commission, which each county has one, and then comes out. We have one more layer here in the Coachella Valley, which 25% of that money comes to Coachella Valley. And then road projects are divvied up with that said. They are looking at future funding projects and where to go. There's a lot of talk in the Southwest District, which is the Temecula Marietta, about projects down there needed. There's a lot of projects taking place on the 15 freeway right now. So we're, we have a good core of individuals on this committee still fighting to make sure the funding stays here in the Coachella Valley for major road projects and interchange projects here in the Coachella Valley. So that's a discussion that's gonna be ongoing right now as they try to figure out the future because the current plan, I believe it ends in 2029, seems like a long ways away. It's really not. <laughs> so we have to be very aware of the future and what's coming along. Uh, projects today that will cost, uh, uh, just for example, a million dollars will cost five million in, in a few years from now. So to be very careful on how we spend that money. The same day I also did a phone conference with the Admin and Personnel Committee for the Coachella Valley Association of Governments. Uh, the big discussion on there was how the rotation of the chair should take place. Currently, uh, the uh, vice chair, which is a chairman for the Agua Caliente tribe, was, it took over chairmanship because of uh, Mike Wilson not being reelected to the Indian, Indio City Council as the elected official. And the current elected official now on that committee wanted a better rotation. In, and so there was a discussion on that and it's being brought back to the executive committee for final approval. Uh, I was able to attend with some city staff, our police chief, the Every 15 Minutes program. This is, uh, if you remember, in some of us in high school remember, uh, yeah, I was too, they didn't do it when I was in high school, but where they bring in the car that's all crashed up and show somebody that was drunk driving and it's a real car that was crashed. They've taken that program and put it on what I call steroids. And they, we actually shut down Choya uh, Road uh, right next to, between the Health and Wellness Center and the high school. And they actually mocked up a whole scene with two vehicles. Our police department was involved. Our fire department was involved. Our emergency uh, trauma center was involved in Palm Springs. They taped for three days. They had a full mock, head-on collision, drunk driver, Four, student, uh, four students in each vehicle. They did a whole scene where they brought in, uh, they unveiled the vehicle, the kids were dressed up as if they were hurt, one was actually deceased on scene, and they did a whole mock-up where the fire department came in, cut them out, the police department did everything. They took them to, or took them in an ambulance. The next day they brought the, the, the student who expired back for a funeral service to make it realistic, and uh, it, was, it was a great realistic program. I didn't get to stay for the whole thing, but it was very moving. It was uh, so moving, some of our staff was in tears. It was just, it was so moving. It was a great experience. Um, I want to thank the police department, fire department, everybody who participated in this. I have asked the school, they have taped the whole program, we'll do a, a, a more shorter version of it, but we want them to come for a presentation before the end of the school year, bring some of the kids and see their experience with this, and if we save a life, that, I hope we do that. 
Um, met with an affordable housing organization nonprofit and talked about some opportunities. Uh, met with, met with uh, Kay Linda and Chris from MJ Tours. who are looking to bring some tours opportunities to, to Desert Hot Springs. They're looking for space right now. Um, I was honored to attend the Big Heart Awards for the Noon Rotary, who we gave out some fantastic awards to the community uh, for Big Hearts, uh, people that teachers, uh, public servants, um, city employees, and just good all around people. And they, are, they, they afforded me the opportunity to be given a mayor's award. And this year, my award was given to Deputy Chief Jim Henson. Uh, he is kind of the backbone to our police chief. He continues to. Uh, when there's an incident and our chief travels a lot, Jim is always there. And it doesn't matter if it's two o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the afternoon, he's there. And it was an honor to be able to give him an award this year. I really thought he was our big heart for this year. Um, the city manager and I have met with the Coachella Valley Chamber of Commerce, who's uh, bringing their, they've started membership here in Desert Hot Springs, bringing our chamber back to life. And they'll be hosting and working with the city on a state of the city this year. I haven't done a state of the city since my first year elected. I thought I wanted to do more town halls and get out to the public and pull more people in so they didn't feel so intimidated to have to come to a big lunch or a big dinner or something. But this year we have, this is my f uh, first year in my second term, and I really wanted to do more of a bigger event and talk about where the future is going for the next couple years and uh, where the city council really is guiding this city. So we'll do a, a big state of the city this year and then go back to town halls again. And, and that's being planned for some time at the end of May. We'll get you the dates here real soon. Um, I understand the senior center issues, and we've talked about this with the school district before. We're having a, a, a meeting here real soon with the school district again, and I'll, I'll make sure I bring those comments up. We'll talk about more of the opportunities that we had talked about in the, in the past and see what we can do with that for you on the senior center. Uh, support the Desert Hot Springs Women's Club. They do fantastic scholarships in this community. They had the, they've had three of, this will be their third event in the last few months, and they really do put all those scholarships back in the community, and you can see what they've done for individuals. And they give scholarships to people going to call, uh, uh, kids going to college and then they come back and they serve their communities like Annie Ellie's. So, and uh, we have two members of the Women's Club right here on our city council, so that's fantastic. And then my last comment is I just wanted to welcome uh, Tony Lopez III, who is the tribal chairman of the Mission Creek Band of Mission Indians. He's right out here, and I wanted to say thank you for joining us tonight, and welcome. Thank you very much. All right. With that said, we're going to uh, go to our administrative calendar. And our first item on the administrative calendar is item number five, the first amendment to the professional services agreement with STK Architecture Incorporated to provide construction management services for the city hall project. And this is gonna be our public works director, Daniel Porras. And Mr. Mayor, sorry to interrupt before we get going. I have a uh, wife and I own a hair salon within 500 feet of this building and um, uh, that creates a financial conflict. So I'm going to recuse. Mr. Porras, once he's off the dais, you may begin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, members of the council. On August 21st, 2018, City Council authorized the city manager to execute an agreement for uh, engineering value, value engineering and redesign of the new city hall. Uh, since then, uh, that consultant was STK Architecture Incorporated. Since then, that consultant has completed a design. The city issued a request for proposal for construction. Um, the request, the proposals were uh, open, and on March 19th, the City Council approved to award a construction contract to Robert Clapper Construction Services in an amount of $5,088,000. Uh, uh, due to SDK Architecture Incorporated's work with the City during the um, design portion, we are now proposing the First Amendment of the original contract for them to continue services as a construction manager. Uh, of the entire project, which would be our, our city portion of this uh, project. The original contract amount was was a amount not to exceed uh, 500,000. We were, the total expense was actually 464,000. The amount of the First Amendment and the construction management services are, are estimated at 90,128. Therefore, this amendment would increase the original contract in the amount of 35000 which will bring the total contract to $554,758.00. Uh, staff is recommending we award the 
We approve and authorize the city manager to execute the first amendment to the professional service agreement with SDK Architecture Incorporated for the city hall project number 2019-03 to provide construction management services uh, for, the in, for the new city hall project for an increased amount of $90,128. That concludes my staff report. I'm glad to answer any questions. At this time, we'll take public comments. Anybody would like to speak on this item may come forth. State your name and your minute. Three minutes will begin. Final call for public comments. I'll close public comments. I'll go to council comments. Ms. Zavala. Uh, I, I have one. I just wanted to share a, a question that I had uh, for Chuck uh, regarding this item. And in case you're wondering, because I was wondering, you know, if we have, my question was, since we've already awarded a contract to Robert Clapper Construction, um, you know, why are we hiring uh, SDK Architecture to do construction management? And so the, the whole reason behind it is basically just as a safeguard to ourselves, for ourselves to make sure that this construction company is actually complying with what they say they're gonna do, instead of having relying on their word that they are doing it. So it's just, it's, it's a good way for us to make sure that we have an outside agency kind of monitoring the construction uh, management of the, of the city hall project so with that I'd, I'd say I'm definitely in support of it and it also with the we don't have a lot of staff members some cities hire individuals that will project manage for you and our staff is spread thin to begin with so it, it makes some sense to bring someone in from that we trust on the outside to be our, our advocates so with that said I have nobody else in the queue I'll entertain a motion so moved Second. There's a motion and a second, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. All right, bring Mr. Betts back in the room. We'll move on to item number six, which is art and public places application number 01-18, a request to make revisions to the previously approved public art for the Bunch Palms Trail project. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking this is gonna be Scott, not Danny. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and good evening, council members. Okay, there we go. The applicant is requesting to make some minor changes to the previously approved public art for the Bunch of Palms Trail uh, Cultivation Project located at the southwest corner of Cabot Road and Two Bunch Palms Trail. Here's a recent uh, site photo that kind of shows the progress of the building uh, in the construction. There's no occupancy yet. Uh, yet. They're still uh, working on the interior. Here's a picture of the previously approved public art that went to council September 4th, 2018. And as I stated, this previously went to councils, were approved with the condition that the statue be placed on top of an eight foot pedestal, uh, sorry, six foot pedestal and be placed in front of the fence. The applicant uh, has resubmitted an application. It went back to CCAC with the requested modifications to lower the pedestal from six feet down to 18 inches and then to place an additional uh, tubular steel fence 40 inches tall in front of it so it's still going to be outside the perimeter fence but it, uh, an additional smaller fence uh, to keep pedestrians etc um, with that this is a recommendation for from the uh, community and cultural affairs commission uh, for approval as resubmitted with the modifications so the applicants uh, here in the audience if you have any questions and staff's available as well Thank you very much. We'll open up to public comments this time. Would anybody like to speak on this item? Second call. Final call. We'll close public comments and we'll take questions from council. I'm sorry, do we have, yeah, come on up. Just state your name. My name is Gary Devlin. I'm also part of the Mission Creek Reservation. Um, I don't know if you know, but on the reservation years ago, in the 50s and 60s, they had a family named the Kitchens, and they raised horses, and they were the best horses in the valley. And I thought this was very appropriate to have in front of this building. I just thought I'd make this statement, thank you. Thank you very much. Any other public comments? 
All right, we'll close public comments this time. Mr. Betts? So, so if I understand correctly, the fence that's going in front of it is just a low fence just to make it so people don't walk up to the item itself. It's not blocking the view of the art? No, that's staff's understanding. It's going to be a tubular steel fence. Uh, something I imagine like somewhere like four inches on center for each. Yeah, yeah something like we see when you go to exhibits in Washington, D.C. or something where you want to get close, you want to experience, but obviously do not walk up there. Yeah, to and I think they're proposing 30 inches uh, from the small perimeter fence to the statue. Okay. So. Good. Looks good to me. Thank you. Any other questions from council? I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. There's a motion and a second on the table. No more discussion. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Move on to item number seven, First Amendment to the Professional Services Agreement with Professional Staffing Team, Inc. for Contract Engineering Services. Mr. Porras. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. The city uh, has experienced a large increase in, in demand of development. Uh, we currently are still experiencing that increase. We have a lot of construction projects, a lot of projects in the, in the process for approvals, and we also have a lot of construction uh, um, capital improvement projects in design and in construction. We've had a couple of vacancies which we're currently filling in. Uh, since that time, on January 1st, we entered into a contract with a professional staffing team to provide some part-time engineers uh, to assist our current staff while we transition into our staff vacancies. The original contract was approved on January 1st for an amount of not to exceed $30,000, which was the city manager's um, uh, maximum amount for allowed. We now are reaching that $30,000 mark and are now here presenting uh, to approve the first amendment of $20,000 additionally, which will bring a total contract of $50,000. The additional would be for a not to exceed contract of a total contract of $50,000, which would be 20 hours a week at the rate of $135 an hour, which is a current engineering staffing team uh, hourly rate. We had had great success with the staff from this company, and we would like to move forward with this amendment. Uh, this time, staff is recommending to approve and authorize the city manager to execute a first, first amendment to the professional service agreement with professional staffing team for the contract engineering services for an increased amount of $20,000 to bring a not to exceed amount of $50,000. That concludes my staff report. I'll gladly answer any questions. Anyone in the public would like to speak on this item? Final call. Close public comments. Mr. Betts? Um, I just curious. Is this a budgeted item this, this was a, under engineering staffing yeah we currently do not have an associate engineer which we're currently hiring so yes it would contract okay so this is funds that would have gone for a hire but instead going to that's correct okay all right good correct. I'm happy with the rec support staff on this I'd make a motion to approve I have a motion is there a second, second. Okay. do I have anybody else that want to speak on this item I have nobody else in the queue please vote Motion passes unanimously. We had one item on the consent calendar tonight. It was City Council regular meeting minutes of March 19th, 2019. Mr. Betts wanted that pulled for clarification or a correction. Yes. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, keyed off a one sentence here in the minutes, or actually action minutes. It said it was unanimously agreed to approve the cannabis strategic plan. And then the sentence goes on, and I don't have the exact packet number. Um, it's the second page of the minutes. And it wasn't, a, I, I went back and I reviewed, it's an hour and 21 minutes of the meeting, and it wasn't, I wasn't my understanding that we had actually um, formally approved the cannabis strategic plan. We had talked about um, coming back for another study session. Uh, I know there was some lengthy discussion between Councilwoman Pai and Councilwoman Zavala over the you know how the nature of that study session would go whether it be informal or more structured and then so I went back and I reviewed every comment there so I would like to change that just for my fears that the, the, this as it's worded now gives the impression that we unanimously agreed to approve cannabis strategic plan and there was anything I could see in that hour and 21 minutes that said that we did that so I just like to change the wording on that too it was unanimously agreed to continue to review 
the cannabis strategic plan with the understanding that it would return in the future for a study session and final city council approval at a regular city council meeting and that it is not yet approved as a formal document. And it's just to provide some additional clarification. We don't have, we have action minutes. We don't have um, summary minutes. So it's hard to go back into the written record and see exactly what was discussed. You can't, you can't do that. You have to go watch the audio to see that. And this, to my view, doesn't, uh, the, the way it was written didn't accurately portray um, what we had done and what we had decided. So I would like to open it up for discussion at this time. Does, uh, go ahead, Ms. Pye. To me, to me, it does, it is what happened. Yes, I, I had conversation. Um, and if I remember correctly, you said you agreed with, um, Annie Ella, he didn't say anything. He said he can talk to people at any time. And in order for me to do something, I would have to go and get another member um, to go with me to do the public comment the way, the way I wanted it. I didn't have it. And so the council agreed to continue yeah, well, I think I think we agreed. I think everybody agreed with the approach on the you know the study session. That wasn't the point I was making. I was just using it as an example of the type of w the, your conversation back and forth was for the purpose of how do we go forward? How do we proceed with more study of this issue? And however that shook out on that particular detail was one thing. But the the point here I'm making is that this makes it sound as if we unanimously agreed to approve a cannabis strategic plan, which we didn't do. So that's the point I'm making. And I think we did. Okay. Okay, so. I, Mr. Betts is making a proposal to make the corrections. Did you want to make that in the form of a motion? Yes, see I if do. you get a second? Yes. Okay, so his motion is to change the minutes uh, as stated. Does he, do, does he have so a second? That's all you want to do, just basically say that. There's the word. That we haven't formally voted on any specific thing. I mean, I mean essentially yeah. everything that we talked about, we didn't have like a formal action vote on anything. That's going to come back individually that's right. for a formal and vote. And that's all that the changed language so says. So you're just trying to say clarify. this is going to come back for a formal vote. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's fine. That's fine. So I just made uh, I, I, Just real quick, we were, we were done with the study session at that point. Each and every item from that has to come back to council for approval and they'll be coming back individually all the action items so for us to do another study session it doesn't it seems like we're back to the same place we were before okay that wasn't that's not what i'm talking about okay. going back to another study session that option's all completely open to the discretion however we want to handle it going forward all i'm trying to do is correct the minutes from before and it's really maybe it's bigger deal than than it is but it's just to me as i read this it says right here we unanimously agreed to approve the cannabis strategic plan, and there's nothing in the hour and 21 minutes that I reviewed today that showed that we formally took that action. Everybody was talking about that final step coming down the road with each item coming back. So that's all. I think, uh, I think it's worded that way because we approved the very general consensus, a, a consensus about the, the strategic plan that we have. If you remember, when we looked at like the different things that were under each section, um, they were very broad. So we didn't specifically get into the very nitty gritty of exactly what are we going to do because they, they didn't come as formal action items. But if it will, if it'll make you feel better, we'll just to have it say wonderful. it's unofficial until there's a formal vote, that's I would, fine. I would I'll love do to that. Have, I'll do that. I would that's love fine. to have summary I minutes. I don't have an issue with Good. that. I would love to have summary minutes for the uh, for study sessions. Well, we're not going that far right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, right. I don't know about that one, but there I'll is a motion and a second on the table. Is there any more discussion? <laughs> All right. If you feel the minutes need to be corrected, then please or please vote either way.
Motion fails with Mayor Mattis, Councilmember Gardner, Mayor Potempi voting no. All right, I'll take a, um, I'll make, uh, I'll make a motion to approve the City Council regular meeting minutes in, in whole. Discussion. Yes, let me get the motion on the thing. Right, Mr. Spitz. Okay, so just to get into the record here to make sure that there was definitely components of that cannabis strategic plan that I don't think were finalized that I don't agree with, so it was not unanimous. Um, as the minutes here are purporting, <coughs> and that uh, you know, the, the 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 conversation was this map is a good start to the future of where we are going. I like the fact that we're looking at it from, you know, from a thirty thousand foot view, and now we're going to get down into the five thousand foot view, getting into actual initiatives and details to make some future decisions. And those were the mayor's words. Councilwoman Pai said, "In the future, we have to get into the nitty gritty." I assume we're going to take this one at a time for approval and uh, that we need more meetings and that that's where the two of you got into the different um, discussion about how those meetings would take place. The moderator confirmed to Councilwoman Pai that this was just a proposal for future dialogue ahead of final adoption. And then um, uh, Councilwoman Zavala said we will be taking future specific votes. All of that on this end here is considerably different than the words that appear in the minutes. It was unanimously agreed to approve the cannabis specific plan. Mr. Mayor, Council, if I could offer if it would be acceptable to the Council and Councilmember Betts, I can change the wording so that it reads it was the consensus of the City Council. Was right. says unanimously approved. Look, we, we, we're, when the motion's been made, Mr. Best doesn't agree with us on it. We understand that. We all believe the consensus was made and that the wording on there is fine the way it is. Um, and so I don't want to cut you off, Mr. Betts. You, I'm Did fine. You I'm else? done. I made okay. my point. Mr. Z Ms. Zavala? Uh, I, I just wanted to say, I, I think... Uh, sorry, I forgot to turn on the mic. Um, I think we'll be okay. I, like, like I mentioned before, it was written in such a way where it was very broad. So we did come to a consensus to move forward on that broad, you know, general plan that we were that we discussed during the study session. And I feel comfortable that it is going to come back. You know, each item is going to come back for a formal vote, and there's going to be additional discussion anyway. Okay. So, and just to clarify to clarify if there weren't components of it that I was so in disagreement with, I would have just let it sail. But anyhow, thank you. All right, uh, no other comments on the screen, please vote. Motion passes with council member Betts opposed. All right, future agenda items can always be discussed with city manager's office. Was there anybody in the public that wanted to speak in public comments that did not speak at the beginning of the meeting during public comments? Sally, do you know, I just, too no, I'm joking. You didn't speak, come on up. <laughs> Uh, uh, you can fill it out afterwards. Just make sure you get that to the clerk. State your name, and you have three minutes. Hello, everybody. Hi. It's nice to see everyone's face. I haven't seen you since, I think, the New Year, so Happy New Year. My name is Sally Kirby. I am a volunteer and a staff member at the Senior Center, and I wanted to talk about the issues that are going on with the students and their, um, when they leave school at 3 o'clock and what's been happening. I have video of the students fighting where there's been more than at least 50 students in the parking lot right out here where they've engaged in um, what they call friendly fighting, I think. And it's been ROTC members, so I have video of that. They have hung out in the doorways when I'm teaching my art class, which lets out at 3 o'clock. The seniors have expressed their concerns because they have to walk by them, and they're rude at some times. The kids aren't like bad kids, okay? What the problem is, is they're either trying to get out the wind, wanting to smoke, okay, which is also something I don't think they're allowed to do because they're not 18, in the door wells. I have pictures of them sitting in the door wells, just hanging out, so it's an issue. 
And if there's, we've come up with ideas with camera surveillance, with having more of an impact of security. I've spoken to the truant officers. I um, will be going to the Board of Education to talk to them because something has to be done. Um, we also, I found out about with Borrego. Now, I just found out that it's a full class or they're at their maximum, that's not really the issue. The issue is we have to do something to deter them. And determent means possibly putting a fence where they like to walk because that's their, their issue is they walk from, um, from the high school and this is a shortcut for them. So if we make it a little more of a deterrence for them and they have to walk around the block, maybe they won't hang out at the library. But security needs to be put in place. I was just at um, Palm Springs uh, Mizell. They literally have cameras all around the building and they have, you know, have the camera, the surveillance set up in one of the main offices where their director is. So we're asking that something like that be implemented. What I found out with the twin officers, if we have pictures of these kids, they can take it to, um, to the schools and they can actually um, handle, you know, their procedures with the children. But they have to be able to have those um, images and those pictures. And then they can talk to them and discipline them however they're supposed to discipline. One of the other suggestions that I made was having, um, I don't, I know our police department is understaffed and, you know, we're- Sally. You're out of time. I'm sorry. out of time. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> you got right, one last thought. Just finish it real quick. Um, no, that's okay. it. That's enough. All right. Any other public comments tonight? This is the final chance. Before you guys uh, leave, make sure you fill out a blue card and give it to our city clerks. So they have to have it on record. Hi. Good evening, um, City Council. It's an honor to be here. Like I said, my name is Angela Shaloma Shah. But what I didn't say is that I'm a member of the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma, and I'm an evangelist and a chaplain and a mother and a grandmother, a sister and a daughter. And one of the things that I have noticed about this city, besides the fact that I love this city and that I pray for this city, is that there is no citywide prayer meeting. Um, the, the things that we're discussing tonight with any city in every city, Every city um, really needs to realize that the, the state of the world is in such disarray that much of our problems can be addressed and um, even corrected when good people in high places begin to pray united with one voice. And so I would like to proposition that this city council um, hold back on a cannabis future and consider a, a praying future, because that's where our future is is in the house of the prayer. It's in the house of prayer, and I thank you, and I appreciate all the good work that you do. And God bless you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Nope, Rosie. Sorry, you already spoke in the first public comments. Can't allow it again. Anyone that has not spoke before in the public comments at the beginning of the meeting may speak now. Again, please make sure you fill out a blue card. It's got to be on the record. My name is Katherine Kirkendall Anderson, and I live here for two years now. Um, I just I want to speak about the uh, possibility of food food trucks or a food court where food trucks could be. I think where I'm from, Austin, they're all over the place, and it's a wonderful way of the community being able to go in with their kids, picnic tables in in the in the square, and. Um, it, it's just, I think it's a great idea. Sorry, you missed our study session today. It was on food trucks, but we'll be presenting an ordinance to the city council in the future at the regular meetings uh, in the near future. So if you watch for the city council, you'll see what the proposal okay, is. We'll... Any final comments? All right, with that said, our next city council meeting is April 16th. We are adjourned. <laughs>